Cool season rains after planting impacted a lot of our soybean fields across the state, and what it did is it caused sudden death syndrome to infect. I'm Dylan Mangel, and this is Infield Observations. So I'm in a field here today that has a significant sudden death syndrome infection on these soybean plants. This is a fungus that lives in the soil and it'll grow onto the soybean's roots, causing diminished soybean root systems as well as foliar symptoms stemming from that problem in the soil. This is widespread in a lot of the state this year, going back to those rains we got after planting. Now, when you start to see these symptoms show up in the field now, there's nothing you can do about it at this point, uh, except for take good notes on where this is. The pathogen lives in the soil, and it's going to be there in two years or however many years when you rotate beans back into that field. For that reason, you want to be prepared to put management in those areas. To manage for sudden death syndrome, what you can do is select a resistant variety. That's the most economic return you can get for management. Uh, start with one of those varieties in the seed catalog that specifically says it's good for sudden death syndrome or has a good rating for sudden death syndrome. After you've selected a resistant variety, you can also consider pairing that with a seed treatment that's effective against that. The seed treatment is important because it's in the soil where the pathogen is, preventing or delaying uh, any stress from that pathogen. What you cannot do to manage this is a foliar fungicide. Despite having symptoms on the leaves, it's all stemming from what's going on below the ground. Foliar symptoms from sudden death syndrome often start out just like this. The veins will remain green, but between those veins will start to get this symptom development, uh, yellowing or chlorosis, leading to necrosis between those as well. Uh, this will start on the top of the plants and work its way down. If you're seeing it in the middle of the canopy first and working up, you might have another problem because several other things can cause these symptoms or similar symptoms. Sudden death syndrome plants will also drop their trifoliates as well. So if you see stems with dropped trifoliates, but the petioles remaining attached to the stem, that's potentially another sign of sudden death syndrome in those plants. The last thing you could do to verify this and that I recommend you do every time is pull up a sudden death syndrome plant and look at those roots because that's where this is. Now this is a perfect example of one of these because it has this blue growth right here. While this is not always present, it does show up from time to time uh, and it's very diagnostic for sudden death syndrome. The last thing you should do is cut that stem open and make sure that you have sudden death syndrome symptoms inside because brown stem rot is another fungus that can cause these, these foliar symptoms but will have very different symptoms inside that plant. So if we split this open, notice that there is no brown stem rot. It's just the foliar symptom with a seemingly healthy stem. Now down here at the base though, you can see uh, a tan or cream color occurring around the crown of that plant. Now, if you have any questions about sudden death syndrome or other foliar symptoms that look similar, go online to cropwatch.unl.edu or contact your Nebraska Extension.